Corey's back. What is going on guys? Welcome to the video. So is that the corniest intro you've ever seen? Uh, my parents are away this week, or they're going away in a few days, so um, I am watching my bird again. And right now the camera is sitting on my dashboard, not on like a tripod or anything, so there's a good chance it's gonna fall, so hopefully we can get through this. Uh, but anyway, in the last video, I said that I wanted to show more of my life, so I'm going to try to live up to that promise right now. Right now I am headed to school. For those of you who did not know, I am in law school, and a few people have asked me to discuss like how I balance my life in the gym, the fitness, uh, and law school. And honestly, the reason I haven't discussed this topic at all is because it's not very impressive to me. To me, the people who deserve credit are the people who have a family, a full-time job, and are still able to maintain their fitness goals. But honestly, maintaining fitness goals with no family, no like no kids, uh, no full-time job, and just going to school with a part-time job. That's easy in my opinion. That's why I never really thought that it was too impressive. I don't really think I deserve any credit at all for being able to do it. It was much harder for me before law school when I worked full time. That I found difficult to actually, um, I mean, not, not that I ever stopped going to the gym, but that was more difficult because camera sliding. Um, yeah, so I found it way more difficult to actually maintain my fitness goals while I was working full time because I had to be at work early, so it was really hard to go to the gym early. And then I really didn't want to go at night. But now with school, it's actually a lot easier. But for those of you who are busy, who do find it difficult to actually maintain a fitness lifestyle with either school or work, I recommend trying to go to the gym before you start your entire day. So go as early as you physically can. Now, if you work really early, like 6 a.m., it might be difficult to do that. But hopefully, if that's the case, then you get out earlier. But if you don't work till like 8 or 9, I really strongly recommend trying to go to the gym beforehand. And I. I know how you guys feel. When I was in college, uh, I was not a more. I could not go into the gym in the morning. I wanted to go in the afternoon, and the thought of even going to the gym like before 10 a.m. just made me nauseous. But now I am a morning person, and I actually prefer going early. And as much as it might suck to go like, like 5, 6 a.m., just think how good it's going to feel at 7 or 8 a.m. when you're already done for the day, and now you have everything else to do without having to worry about the gym. So that's what I really recommend you do. Um, I mean, yeah, it's not ideal, but I do think that when you get the gym out of the way in the beginning of the day, nothing can really get out of your, nothing could get in your way, nothing could stop your workout, no matter how hard school is, no matter how much stuff you have going on, you already know the workout was completed, so it's not something that you have to think of later on in the day. So I mean, going to the gym early, that's like my main advice, if you could, if you can do that. Um, other advice is try to be a little bit more flexible, like if you're going to the gym five or six days a week, realize that you don't have to go five or six days a week you can go four days a week you can go three you can even go two if it's if it's necessary i mean you have to do what you have to do to get done you have to sacrifice other things if you think you need eight hours of sleep try getting seven hours try getting six hours um if you're doing other scrutinize everything that you do during the day if you realize that maybe you're wasting time like Maybe you're hanging out like at a dining hall for an hour and you don't even realize that you're wasting an hour. But like, there's things that you do during your day that you probably can get away without doing, but you're just so used to doing it that you don't stop. So go to the gym early, scrutinize every minute of your day. Nothing is, um, there's nothing in your day that you necessarily have to do besides like school and work. So all those other things, look at it, see what you can cut down. And you gotta make it work. I mean, no one's gonna feel, no one has to go to the gym. You don't have to go to the gym. I mean, this is something we choose to do. So, I mean, if you wanna make it work, you'll make it work. And like I said, the people who deserve the credit are the people working full-time jobs with a family and still manage to get to the gym. Those are the people that I think deserve credit. Not me, because I, you know, because I go to law school. So, uh, that's my little talk for now. Uh, I'm in traffic heading to law school now. And um, I think after this, uh, actually, I'm not sure what the rest of the video is going to be. We'll find out. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the workout. So to spoil the surprise, the rest of the video is going to be my last workout. And if you saw the last video, you know that I finally, or not finally, you know that I didn't like the last routine and I just switched to a new routine. So this was my first workout on my new routine. 
after my deload last week. Um, before I get into that, I'm going to discuss that. Uh, if you saw the thumbnail of the video, why it was so weird, why I had like a, a thing in my mouth, I'm going to be doing a giveaway uh, later tonight, actually, for Eat Me Guilt-Free Brownies. Uh, I didn't announce it yet. This is the first time I'm saying it. So if you guys want to win a box of Eat Me Guilt-Free Brownies, pay attention to my Instagram, probably around 9 o'clock tonight, Eastern Time. I'm going to be doing a giveaway like I did my Halo Top giveaway last week, so you guys have a little bit of a heads up, just so you know. And that's the picture in the thumbnail that I'll be using, so I figured, why not throw it up here too? Um, so my new routine is a upper-lower split. Uh, the way it's different than my last upper lower split where I was following first five three one then a different progression I am breaking it up into a lower strength day upper strength day and then two hypertrophy days one upper and one lower and this is my lower strength day so the main difference here is that I'm still squatting like I always do but after squats I deadlift rather than have deadlifts on their own day so there are pros and cons to that it's funny, I, the reason I actually switched away from this in the past was because I didn't really like doing deadlifts after squats, because obviously after squats, your deadlift is going to be taking a little bit of a hit. You're not completely fresh. So deadlifts are going to suffer just a little bit. Um, I, as long as you do deadlifts after squats instead of the other way around, it won't be too bad. If you try squatting after deadlifting, um, it's different. Um, when I did deadlifts, this Texas bar, um, my friend, it's not the gym's bar. My friend at the gym has this bar that he keeps there. I never used it for deadlifts though because he's never there on Tuesdays when I used to deadlift. But now that I am deadlifting on Saturdays, he's always there. So I asked him if I could use it. And it makes a very, very big difference. I was using a really crappy bar for deadlifting. And this one's particularly made for deadlifting. So I did notice a difference. So yeah, the, the thing, the major difference is deadlifting after squats. Like I said, as long as you're doing it that way instead of squats after deadlifts, it's not that big of a deal. But I do not recommend trying to squat after deadlifts when your lower back is already fried. So yeah, you're not as fresh, you're not as strong, but the reason, the reason I do like doing it after squats is trying to get the strength stuff out of the way, because now when I get to Tuesday, rather than have to do like start off deadlifts and then go into a leg day, the whole thing is basically just a leg hypertrophy day. So you get that strength out of the way, and I mean, there's, there's no really right or wrong way to do it. It's funny, the reason I got away from this originally was because I didn't like doing deadlifts after squats. But now I actually prefer to put the deadlift, right now at least, I prefer putting deadlifts after squats. This way I get it out of the way in one day and I could just forget after the weekend's done, I don't have to lift heavy the rest of the week. So it's like mentally, it's nice to know you go into the gym focusing only on strength for two days and then you focus only on hypertrophy for two days and then you just keep changing your mindset back and forth rather than going to every workout knowing that you have to do both. Because some days like I'm just not in the mood to lift heavy. So it's kind of nice to know that like, after the weekend, I don't have to lift heavy the rest of the week. And sometimes I don't really like lifting lighter weights. So it's nice to be like, all right, well, on the weekend, I get to lift heavy. So it's nice to like separate it, but I'll probably get sick of that at some point as well. That's just the way I'm feeling right now. There's pros and cons to both methods. It's really whatever you choose. I wouldn't say either one is necessarily more effective. Um, so after those two exercises, I did move on to some leg press, the calf raises, and then I did abs afterwards, which I didn't show, and that was it. Um, in the later videos, I'll go over more of how I'm, I'm going to progress, but I didn't have time in that video. It is wrapping up here. Um, if you guys like the video, please hit the thumbs up. It does help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't. And like I said, check out Instagram tonight, AFAO. I will be doing a giveaway of those brownies. You guys are the first to hear about it. You'll see that tonight. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.